When I have a lot of wealth, I will then give a poor person. In what way? What does Islam teach us? Let me inform you. The personality of a Muslim should lead him to believe that the poor person in front of him is a gift for him. Without that poor person, you were never ever going to be able to give a charity. Imagine all millionaires sitting here and you take out $500 and I want to give the other millionaire. He'll tell me what? 500? What's all this about? Who do you think you are? You think I'm a poor person? So we need to consider the poor person a gift of Allah to us that you can give a charity to. And the hadith says, charity, you know, the charity would actually extinguish the calamity that is coming in your direction. So before embarking on a journey, you give a little bit of a charity. Before embarking on a journey, you give a charity. When something important is about to happen, you give a charity. Before an examination happens, you give a charity. To whom? To those who would accept it. Who will accept it? The poor. So when you look at a poor person, speak to him with respect. Speak to him with respect. Consider him a senior, not a junior. Consider him a gift of Allah sent to you through whom you can fulfill an act of worship. The sad reality is we don't do that. You see a poor person and a worker and you say, yeah, by the way, anyway, some people will even maltreat them, laugh at them, scoff. Bare minimum is they won't even consider them human beings sometimes. Allah safeguard us. That same person, even if he's a non-Muslim, Believe me, if you were to be kind to him, by him entering the fold of Islam, by the will of Allah, you stand a better chance to go into paradise. Why? When you have worked on someone and through your effort, they have been guided to Islam by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything they do, you get the full reward for it. Full. So it is like a double life you have now. Yours, your good deeds and their good deeds. When you read Salah five times a day and he has read Salah five times a day, you get the reward of 10 Salah. When he ends up giving Zakah, you get the reward of the similar amount. So you gave yours and whatever he gave, you still get the reward for it because you brought him to the goodness. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu wallahi la'an yahdiya Allahu bika rajulan wahidan khayrul laka min humurin na'am wallahi for Allah to guide through you even one person is better for you than whatever the greatest material wealth of this world has. Because of this. So we need to know when giving charities it is something good it purifies our wealth. And it results in the development of our personality if only we do it correctly for the sake of Allah. And this is why also when people have clung or when they cling to wealth and they are stuck to it and they become stingy and they don't want to give anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectifies that weakness by developing the personality by compelling a person to give out a certain amount. You are compelled. And you are not supposed to be so stuck to that wealth that you will compromise your religion, your ethics, your personality as a Muslim, the teachings of Islam in order to earn a dollar or two. We should never do that. Why is this? This is because if everyone had to do that, and believe me, it's happening in some parts of the globe where people would just want to earn by hook or crook, literally by hook or crook, they want to earn. If that is the case, life would be full of mafias and each one would want to outdo the other. And even when you become so wealthy, you won't be able to stomach one deal that another person has got because it should have come to me. Why did it go to them? This happens sometimes to the mega wealthy. What happens to them? They have everything. They have thousands of department stores and thousands of businesses. But a small man has one supermarket and this big man cannot stomach it. Why does he have it? Why? Fix him. So show him. He wants to compete with me. Who is he? Allahu Akbar. What is this? Personality is gone out of the window, thrown straight out. We should realize Allah's given you, you only needed one store to survive. The other 500 you are holding, they are not even going to be used by you, not even a fraction of it. And here is a poor man suffering to come up onto his feet and you are becoming jealous of him. What kind of personality do you have? So Allah says, 
you should be happy to set up a fellow Muslim or even a fellow human being in business and see them grow. Allahu Akbar. What did the Sahaba radiallahu anhum do? When the Muhajireen, the people of Mecca, migrated to Medina Munawwara, they were assisted to come onto their feet to the degree that they became wealthier than those who assisted them. And there was no hatred amongst them. They loved each other to the T. Subhanallah. Who would do that? That was the personality. That is the Islamic personality. Where are we? And where is the personality? Today a person cannot even pay a Muslim staff or even a non-Muslim staff equivalent to the work they are doing. You know this man is suffering, he's got a family, he's got bills to pay, he's got so many things to do, but we are paying them far lower than what we would had it been someone else we imported from another more advanced country. Same person, but we don't want to pay them. Why? Because I know him and his family. Where is he going to go? He won't go anywhere. He can't get another job. Believe me, it is an act of worship to increase the salaries of those working for you for as long as you can afford it and you know that this person deserves this amount. Don't hold back. When you increase their salary, it will come to your grave with you as a point of creating ease in your grave. Why do I say this? Because you will be asked about your wealth on the day of judgment. And even prior to that, your wealth will already either be a burden upon you or it will be a means of ease for you. And if you have given it away and you have spent it in the right cause, it will come in to assist you. And it will be a means of creating ease for you to enter paradise. You could spend what Allah gave you. Allah says, I own paradise. I just want to give it to you. There you are. So we are not talking of charities. Sometimes you have people who give big, big charities, but they cannot pay their own people who work for them. So their employees begin to complain. And yet the others are saying, but this man is so charitable that they do not have their priorities straight. They do not have them straight. Someone is sweating for you. They are working for you. You haven't paid the man. And if you've paid him, he is complaining. He sleeps every day saying, Ya Allah, we need this. Ya Allah, we need that. Ya Allah, put it in the heart of this man to increase. Put, do this, do that, and so on. May Allah grant us goodness. I know I have spoken on one side. Let me quickly speak on the other. So nobody develops horns. You know what the development of horns means? That means people will take a copy of this lecture and give it to their boss. And say, minute this or from this second to that second, please listen to it. So in order to equate that, we need to say, when you are working somewhere, work hard. And you need to know as a Muslim worker, there's no time to sit on the internet, to read the newspaper, to have tea, and to go and you know fool around and so on. Work hard. And remember, let those whom you are working for feel and believe that you are an asset to their system. And inshallah, Allah will be pleased with you. But the minute we are not honest, and the minute we are people who take it for granted, in that particular case, we do not deserve goodness. The personality on our side is lacking. We ask Allah to make us good employers and good employees. So here we have only spoken about salah and zakah. And I've spoken about how important giving wealth is and how it develops our personality. Look at where we started. The charities and we went on to salaries as well. Development of personality. In fact, we can even spend a few moments on employer-employee relationship where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِخْوَانُكُمْ خَوَلُكُمْ جَعَلَهُمُ اللَّهُ تَحْتَ أَيْدِيكُمْ فَمَنْ كَانَ أَخُوهُ تَحْتَ يَدِهِ فَلْيُطْعِمْهُ مِمَّا يَأْكُلْ وَلْيُلْبِسْهُ مِمَّا يَلْبَسْ وَلَا تُكَلِّفُوهُمْ مَا يُغْلِبُهُمْ فَإِنْ كَلَّفْتُمُوهُمْ فَأَعِينُوهُمْ What a powerful hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, your servants or the people who work for you are your brothers. They are your brothers. Your brothers either in humanity if they are not Muslim or in Islam if they are Muslim. And it is just coincidence that Allah has put them under your authority. Did you hear that? It is just coincidence that Allah has put them under your authority, which means if Allah wanted, the coin could have been the other way around. You could have been under them. And there may come a time when your grandchildren will be under their grandchildren. How many times it has already happened where there were wealthy people whose fathers used to work for, you know, or, or, or people's fathers used to work for the wealthy. And today those grandchildren of the wealthy are working for the grandchildren of the one who was working for the wealthy. Allahu Akbar. If you've seen it, it has happened. 
So the hadith continues to say, Allah has put them under your authority. So whosoever has a brother under his authority in this manner, he should feed him with similar food to that which he eats. Allahu Akbar. And he should clothe him with similar clothing to which he clothes himself. That's a tough one, isn't it? Very tough. And the hadith continues to say, and do not ask them to do something so difficult to do. If you want to instruct them to do something very difficult, you stand up and help them. Allahu Akbar. That is personality. This is Islam. This is what it is. So when you are giving people, make sure if not exactly your clothing, you know, at least something they are comfortable with. At least something they are comfortable with. And you tell a man, you know what, take these rocks and put them there. And he's one man and he looks at you, he says, yes sir. And he's in his mind, he's thinking I'm going to suffer. And, and then he's trying to lift it and he's sweating and so on. Wallahi, a good Muslim. You can have been a boss and 10 bosses inshallah. And you can be a big boss also and a very big boss also. But you can also roll up your sleeves, take out your shoes or whatever you'd like or put on gumboots and say, look, you hold that side, I hold this side. Wallahi, in a few moments, he will realize this man is following a heavenly religion. In a few moments, he will realize this big boss that the whole world looks up to has put down all his pride and he's come to give me a hand. I am working for him. And he's telling me, let me carry this side of the crate and you carry the other side. And together we'll take these 20 crates onto the other side. Subhanallah. That is development of personality. There we are. The same applies in business. When the Prophet ﷺ passed by the man who was selling dates and he put his hand in and he felt the bad dates at the bottom and the beautiful dates at the top. What did he say? Ma hadha ya sahib at ta'am. What have you done here? Whoever cheats and deceives is not from us. He cannot be from us. You want to shortchange the people. You want to write a check that is going to bounce. You want to intentionally put a signature that doesn't even spell your name. So in order to gain a week or two time, Allah protect us. This is happening amongst people who call themselves Muslim and amongst people who might pray five times a day. But because they think that Islam is confined to the masjid, the minute they come out of the masjid, they are somewhere else doing something else. I need to make a quick buck. Why? Because I have my family to look after. What type of money is that going to help? Then you find a child in this direction, the other child in the other direction. Why is this happening? Because your wealth is dirty. Allah protect us. We need to know this. Develop our character. Let's move on to something more than zakah. Let's look at fasting. What is fasting all about? Fasting has so many benefits. It's a pillar of Islam. But it develops our character and conduct and personality. When we have forced ourselves to stay away from food and water that is right there, what will happen? And from sexual desires that are permissible, we stop ourselves from it. In order to do what? Personality development as well. Which means there are many reasons, but this is one. It's our topic. We need to speak about it. You get to realize the condition of the poor. You get to think to yourself that there are some people who cannot afford food or who do not have it at all. And here I am. I can't even stand 12 hours without it. So it makes you, it should be making you want to help them. And a lot of people give out their charities in the month of Ramadan to the degree that the reward is multiplied in the condition of fasting. We know that. Your heart becomes soft. A person becomes generous. Amazing. So it develops our character and conduct again. Another thing, when we are fasting, what are we taught? مَن لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ وَالْجَهْلَ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ فِي أَنْ يَدَعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ Whoever in the condition of fasting does not leave false speech or false witness and evil foul speech, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need the fact that he has abstained from his food and drink. It doesn't help in any way. Nothing. What does that mean? In the condition of fasting, you need to make sure that you watch your tongue in the same way we don't allow things to go in, we don't allow things to come out that will displease Allah. A lot of the times we have a problem in Ramadan, to be very honest with you, 
come the heat of the afternoon and people are swearing. You have this man in his tri-show, the other man in his vehicle, people are hooting at each other, they are you know, showing signs to each other, swearing each other from a distance and so on. And you are fasting my brother, you are fasting my sister. Why the temper? Why allow shaitan to overtake? Remember, it's a time to develop your personality. Be patient. Be patient. And you will notice that that patience will come to your rescue. The same applies abstaining from permissible relations with your own wife. What should it do for you? It should develop your personality to say, in the condition of fasting, I could stay away from this. When I'm not fasting, I will appreciate it, that which is permissible. So if I can stay away from that which is allowed, from that which is permissible for these many hours, then surely I can stay away from that which is not permissible at all for the rest of my 11 months. But when a person hasn't fasted properly, what development of character do they want? And let's move on to the last one. And that is the Hajj. Do you know that Hajj is compulsory for all those who can afford the trip and manage it and have been granted permission to go and do it, meaning you have a visa for it? Once in a lifetime, compulsory. To go for Hajj is easy. To come back and live as a person who has fulfilled Hajj, what we would call a Hajj, is not that easy. When a person goes for Hajj, my experience, and this is not from the Quran or the Sunnah, it's just a personal experience. I have seen many people go for Hajj. When they go, Allah tests them with something they have been spoiled with throughout their lives. And in Hajj, it's not there. What does that mean? If you have lived in the most luxurious home throughout your life, when you go for Hajj, I've seen it happening to many people and I've spoken to a lot of people. That there will be something wrong with the accommodation. Why? Allah wants to test you. Brother, you are going to be forgiven all your past sins. You're going to be dipped literally into something where you're going to come out as clean as the day you were born. We all know that. That's what happens. You think that comes for free? It comes with a lot of patience. So whatever you've been spoilt with throughout your life, that particular item you will be tested with. So if you have a luxurious home, you might have a problem with your accommodation. Not because of anything. Allah wants to test you to say, hang on, your personality, we want to develop it here. Let's see how you react the day you don't have it your way. Allahu Akbar. And then you have people rolling up their sleeves in Hajj, in the condition of Ihram, beating up the agents and telling them, you have robbed me, you cheated me, you see this room here, it is like this and it is like that, and this is bad and that is worth, and starting to swear in Mina and Arafah. If that's the case, we've lost the reward of our Hajj. Sometimes you have people who have very good conveyance. When you go there, you might jump into a bus, the AC is not working, they promised you AC. Another thing is, the tire ruptures, stuck halfway through Makkah, Medina, no one comes to repair. What happens? 15 hours we are sitting on the road. Allah says, hang on, my worshiper, from the time you were born, this was already tailor-made for you. We only watch, you're going to have it once in your life. We are watching how you react. Please react correctly. Allahu Akbar. Whatever we go through, it's tailor-made. The tests I have and you have, Allah knows about them. It's going to happen sometimes once in our lives. And Allah's watching how we react. And we react in the worst way. You pick up your sleeves and start swearing the driver. Why? What's wrong? It was the tire. So then you swear the road. And then what else? You want to swear the heat. Now what's going to happen? May Allah protect us. That's not going to repair your vehicle. Allahu Akbar. You need to realize Allah is developing you. These are the tests. You see yesterday's topic, we spoke on calamities and we spoke on coping with it. Do you know that when you cope with calamity, it automatically develops your personality? Allahu Akbar. Look at how interrelated the subjects are. If you have difficulty after difficulty, you are coping, you develop your link with your maker, you realize you go and help people, you try and do as much as you can. You develop yourself in so many ways. What does it do to you? It makes you a better Muslim, a better person, a better human being, and closer to your own maker, and closer to the other people around you. Amazing. So in Hajj, we are tested. We have to give preference to others, because we cannot be first all the time. If we are used to, mashallah, some people VIP. Everywhere they go, they jump the queue, mashallah. Everywhere you go, you jump the queue. In Hajj, there is nothing like that. 
You have to go, there are another few million people in front of you. You will have to stand with them. You will have to walk up the same ramp four or five kilometers to pelt the devil. You will have to also grab those stones in your own hand and you will have to also pelt and you will have to come out just like everyone else does and you have to do tawaf al ziyara as packed as it is with all whatever amount of rush there might be there. You will have to go within a specific time frame to do that whether you like it or not. And you have to be careful tears to others because everyone wants to achieve the same thing. What is that? If it is not personality development, what is it? Yes, there are many other benefits of the five pillars of Islam. Today we have only discussed the one aspect of it, the aspect of personality development. And I've given several examples and there are so many other examples that I can give. And I'd like to end by saying, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who have learned a lesson. And we ask Allah to make us from those who firmly believe that there is room for improvement in our personality. Every one of us here, let us go home and think, where can I improve myself? My relation firstly with my spouse, with my children, with my parents, with my uncles and aunts, my families, my relatives, my in-laws and so on. How can I develop my relation? Wallahi, I'm not joking. I am being serious. Let us go home and ask ourselves, how can I develop myself with my neighbors, with the non-Muslims I interact with? You know, to smile sometimes is a great act of charity, especially in the face of a fellow Muslim. But that doesn't mean you must frown in the face of a non-Muslim. No, sometimes a little smile and a small greeting, it breaks a lot of ice and they might come closer to Islam. We gave you an example of how the messenger, peace be upon him, not only the issue of assisting, but assisting a non-Muslim. And on top of that, someone who really did not like him, to be honest with you, and was open about it. Allahu Akbar. That is the height of example. And this is why the Quran describes the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Indeed, you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are on a very great level of character and conduct. Your personality is of a top-notch level, subhanallah. That is the Quran describing the personality of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who said, khiyarukum ahasinukum akhlaqan. The best from amongst you are those who have best character and conduct. And he also says, myself and the one who has good character and conduct will be like this in paradise. And the sahaba radiallahu anhum asked him, O oh messenger, may peace be upon him. Tell us there will be people who will go to paradise for several reasons. What is the main thing that will have driven the maximum number of people to paradise? I hope you understand the question. What is the main point that would have taken them to heaven? People who will enter heaven, what brought them there? What is it that they had that was different from the others who did not get there? So he answered very beautifully. He says, Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluqi. Two things. The consciousness of the Creator and good character and conduct. There you are. You want to get access into Jannah? Develop these two and inshallah, by the will of Allah, we will see you there. And until then, or until we meet slightly earlier, back again in the dunya, if Allah wills, we say, Wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanallahi bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik.